The president of the U.S. Bishops Conference says recent sex abuse allegations reveal a, quote, grievous moral failure within the church. Cardinal Daniel DiNardo's comments come in the wake of the resignation of Archbishop Theodore McCarrick. DiNardo vows to pursue the many questions surrounding McCarrick's conduct. Joining me now is Monsignor Stephen Rossetti. Monsignor Rossetti is a licensed psychologist who ran St. Luke Institute, an education and treatment center for priests, deacons, and religious. Welcome to the program, Monsignor. Thanks, Laura. Nice to be, nice to be with you. Nice to be with you. In 2012, right here, yes. you said it is publicly well known that at times in our responding to crisis like this, we have failed. You have been with the church, working with the church since the early 2000s and crafting the church's response to this crisis. How do these new revelations compare to previous failings? Well, Lorna, it reminds me of the old days. It reminds me of people sort of not getting the message. Uh, clearly someone dropped the ball and I'm just glad Cardinal DiNardo put out this statement saying, look, the church needs to look into this. Uh, why didn't people respond earlier? And then calling on bishops to respond with justice and compassion to the victims. So I think that Carl DiNardo has really set the standard on moving forward on this. In 2002, then Cardinal McCarrick was involved. He was instrumental in developing this, which is the promise to protect, pledge to heal, also known as the Dallas uh, charter. It was supposed to protect minors, and those policies applied only to priests, deacons, and religious, but not to bishops. Was that, in hindsight, a mistake? Well, I think the bishops only can write a policy for, for their dealing with priests and, 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 their, and their people. So the Holy See needs to, needs to take care of this. But I would say we do have a structure. If there's a problem with the bishop, you tell the nuncio. And the nuncio tells the Holy See. The, the nuncio is the ambassador from yes. the Vatican to the U.S. And then, then the congregation of bishops needs to deal with this. And somewhere the, the ball was dropped. And I, I think that we have structures. I don't think it's a problem with structures. I think it's people's conversion. I think it's people saying, look, this is a problem. This is serious. People are being harmed, and we need to stop it now. But, but didn't we know that from the past? Well, well, we did with minors. I, I, I think some bishops did, but I, I still... So you're talking about seminarians. Yeah, I mean, they're not minors, but the reality is it's basically clinically and pastorally the same. When you've got a, a, a bishop being sexually involved with a 19-year-old or 20-year-old, I mean, it's functionally the same as being involved with a 13 or 14-year-old. I mean, emotionally, it's exploitive and abusive. And I think learning that it needs to happen. I think it needs to happen in the Holy See. I think all the... I think Pope Francis gets it. He understands victims, but I'm not sure that, that, that the whole church hierarchy understands how damaging this can be. You have a lot of experience in dealing with victims of sexual abuse and dealing with priests. That's right. the whole mission of St. Luke. Right, right. So tell me, what are your recommendations moving forward? In 2012, right. you said that the church leaders are not understanding priest offenders and they are not listening to victims. They're being manipulated by right. the offenders themselves. Right. Yeah. One of the things that we did in Dallas in 2002 was we had four victims tell their story face to face to all the bishops. I think it caused them to hear for the first time from them the pain of victims. Now I'm hoping that this case will open the bishop's eyes and ears and hearts to the pain of these seminarians. I want you to know, by the way, that priests are upset about this. You know, the seminarians and young priests saying, are, are you protecting us? They're, 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 they're upset. Monsignor, I spoke to a priest friend earlier today, and he's a dear friend of mine, and he said that faith doesn't stop because of the actions yeah. of the devil. Yeah. And I'm wondering, what your thoughts are on how not only seminarians and priests recover from this news, but those of us who are in, in lay work. Well, I think we need to look at it from a wider perspective. This whole Me Too movement is really basically the same thing, that the church is part of a larger problem. And the problem is people with or, uh, lack power are being abused, not just in the U.S., but I was recently in several countries around the world where, for example, women especially, no voice and they're being abused, and no one's listening to them. So I think we have to, uh, it's a worldwide problem. You're equating the seminarian abuse with women abuse? Well, I think so. What we're really talking about is people abusing positions of power, whether you're the head of a, a media company or whether you're the, a bishop in a diocese. You're abusing the power you have over the people under you.
Thank you so much for your insights. This was very helpful. Different okay. perspective than we've had here on News Nightly. Monsignor Stephen Rossetti, a licensed psychologist who ran the St. Luke Institute. Thank Thanks you for joining us.